Welcome to a new vlog. In this video I'm gonna show you one potential solution if your design uses a part that you can't source anymore due to the global chip shortage but also the pitfalls of using this method in the case of a DC to DC converter. Please keep in mind that actual price per unit or stock availability will vary between the point I started working on this video which is a couple of months ago, the actual time when I publish it or the time that you're watching it. And let me start by providing a bit of context here. Uh, this is the CAN Lite, an ESP32 based design that I sell on my Tindy store. It's a CAN development board uh, based on the ESP32 Wi-Fi module. It's got a couple of high side uh, switches, it's got the uh, CAN interface, it's got a powerful processor with Wi-Fi capability and an automotive rated DC to DC converter to allow the user to power this from a car 12 volt system or even 24 volt system. The DC to DC converter chip that I'm using here is the uh, Texas Instruments LMR14006 and I've been pretty happy with using DC to DC converters from TI over the years because they generally perform really well and they have good documentation and design resources available. Now as you all know the chip shortage has not been kind to us and as a result I can't find this chip anymore and if we go to Octopart which is like a search engine for electronic components we see there is no stock with any of the major distributors for the particular part number that I was using it is the LMR 14006 X double D C R and don't get your hopes up with wind source or SciTech distributors these guys just list stock for stuff that they don't have and even if they have it it's not worth going through them unless you have a high volume it seems there is some TI stock for a similar part number the LMR 14006 YDDCT and this was not available a couple of months ago uh, when I checked it can vary as stock comes and uh, goes but if we take a closer look uh, at the TI website we first noticed that after adding the part to cart uh, it is not actually available to order from TI and on top of that it is more expensive when compared to the original part number and stuff like this matters especially if you're dealing with lower build volumes and you already have a price set for your end product and I used to get my original part number for 90 cents so this is a massive cost increase especially uh, if we're talking about just a few hundreds of pieces in quantity. So at this point I was wondering if maybe there is an alternative part number from a different manufacturer maybe an Asian manufacturer that sells for less and is potentially at least functionally compatible so I don't need to make uh, a lot of uh, changes to my existing design and as luck would have it there actually is an identical part number by an Asian manufacturer which is pin compatible apparently also most of the specification compatible as well and I learned about it from a close friend that was in the same spot and was searching for an alternative the part is made by Micro One Electronics and the part number is ME3116 now looking at the datasheet we noticed similar specs 4 to 40 volts input uh, the TI part can only do 600 milliamps this one claims 1 amp switching frequency is much lower on the ME3116 uh, the example schematic is pretty similar the feedback circuit is almost identical so this could literally be a drop-in replacement for a much lower cost of just 16 cents a piece just one thing that seemed different was that the ME3116 required a resistor on the enable pin uh, while the uh, TI LMR14006 specifically mentions the enable pin can be left unconnected. So what I did was to design this small evaluation board in KiCad uh, with the intention to have these PCBs manufactured and populated one with the original TI LMR14006 and one with the ME3116 to see if there are any differences between the two. PCBWay.com is the official provider of printed circuit boards for the Voldoc channel so they uh, manufactured these boards uh, right before their spring festival holiday and had them shipped to me quality is uh, great as usual so I would highly recommend you check out their service next in no time I had these uh, boards assembled and ready for testing I used exactly the same components on both boards except for that uh, enable pin pull-up resistor which is only present on the ME3116 board. Now upon powering these two up the first thing I noticed is that the output voltage is slightly higher on the ME3116 this should be 3.3 volts but because the ME3116 feedback uh, is slightly different it requires adjustment of the resistor values to get it to 3.3 volts output this is not an issue it's just a minor difference between the two chips. 
The next thing I checked is the output voltage ripple and this is where things start to get interesting. I used a uh, 10 ohm resistive load which puts it in the 330 milliamp range which is about the maximum load that I plan to get out of these converters so I am particularly interested in how they perform at this level. I measured right at the output terminals with the oscilloscope probe using industry standard noise measurement technique. First up, the TI-LMR14006 shows about 15 millivolts of peak-to-peak -peak noise. Uh, this is with just a 22 microfarad capacitor on the output, no additional filtering. And this is perfectly okay for powering an ESP32, uh, which comes with uh, additional local bypass capacitors or powering anything else for that matter. Next up, the ME3116 surprised me. I wasn't expecting to see a 7 times increase in voltage ripple. This guy puts out around 100 millivolts peak to peak, and this is more than I would comfortably use. I mean, the ESP32 would maybe still function okay, uh, but 50 millivolts is my personal limit when designing circuits just to be on the safe side. If I am above that, I start looking at, at adding additional filtering, which would of course offset the cost savings from using a cheaper part. Another thing to consider with using a a noisier DC to DC is the potential impact it's going to have if you're trying to have your product EMC certified. Next up, I wanted to measure the efficiency first by comparing the usual power in versus power out, but also by taking some thermal images after running the boards through uh, a load test because just by datasheet specs, the TI part seems to have a lower RDS on. First test I run at 12 volt input, the same 330 milliamp load. No major differences found here. The TI part had an efficiency of 83.5%, while the ME3116 showed 83%. Half a percent difference is neither here or there, and generally speaking, pretty close to the claim datasheet figure of roughly 85%. The second test for the thermal images I ran at 24 volts input, 0.5 amps loads, just to put a bit more stress on the regulator. First, the Texas Instruments chip. Even though I ran the test for uh, 10 minutes, a temperature settled early in the test to 41 degrees Celsius, measured on the converter chip, and didn't rise any further. The ME3116 showed slightly better results uh, at just 38 degrees C, but this minor difference can happen due to slight variations in the test setup. It doesn't necessarily tell us anything, uh, just that everything is okay with both chips. Next up, I took a look at the slip current, so how much energy are we using if the enable pin is pulled low, aka the regulator is turned off, because if you use this in a design where you're trying to save power, maybe you might consider turning off this regulator. I use my joule scope to do these measurements. This is a great tool and I highly recommend you watch my review of the joule scope and get one if you do these kinds of measurements. The ME3116 with presumably an internal pull down showed under one microamp of slip current. For the LMR1406 I had to use an external 10k pull down resistor to the enable pin and I saw just over one microamp. Both of these figures match datasheet claims, but the ME3116 does slightly better here. I also looked at the startup behavior under load with the oscilloscope. There were no obvious issues, no overshoot or anything like that. There are plenty of other measurements that I could have taken, but uh, it would make this video too long and boring. I encourage you to run specific uh, concerning tests for your application if you're trying to replace a part number with an alternative, but for me this set of tests is enough to evaluate whether or not I want to use the ME3116 in my designs. And the conclusion is that I wouldn't use the ME3116 in the uh, Canlite project, especially if uh, I want these boards embedded inside automotive electronics. For now, I'll stick to the TI part, which luckily I could still find an order right before uh, releasing this video. It seems that it is currently stocked on an Asian supplier. Maybe I'll be using the ME3116 for other applications where noise isn't such a big concern. Maybe I will add more capacitance to its output, maybe a pie filter, but at some point it's not worth the effort if you can just find the TI part that does a better job for just a little more money. Now, of course, if you are desperate and you really can't find the original part, you have no option but to use whatever you find close enough and adjust your design accordingly, which in this case would mean uh, additional output filtering and I would end, end up using the ME3116. My hope is that uh, this video serves as inspiration for those that are affected by the chip shortage and if there is a part that you cannot get anymore just try to look for pin compatible alternatives. It will take a lot of time of browsing through these uh, Asian uh, supplier websites 
but who knows, there might be one out there that matches almost 100%. I wouldn't be surprised, for example, if there was yet another pin compatible chip from another manufacturer that would match my original TI part, because, you know, it's easy for these Asian manufacturers to just copy specs from a non manufacturer just because there is already an existing market for that chip with those specs. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, multiple manufacturers copied those specs. If you found this video useful, please consider hitting the like button or supporting the channel via Patreon. You can do that with as little as $1 per month and you'll also get early access to the uh, videos I'm publishing. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.